Hello, we're going to discuss section 13.6, which talks about using K and Q in the ICE method we discussed in section 5 and applying it to more realistic equilibrium problems. So we're going to do a little bit more of what we've already done. Okay, so let's just review the procedure to solve equilibrium problems. First, you need to make sure to write the balanced equation. Then write your equilibrium expression using the law of mass action, so K and all of those things. Sometimes K will be given, sometimes not. List out your initial concentrations, so do the I part of ICE. Calculate Q if you need to determine the direction of shift, and we will talk about whether or not that's necessary. Then define the change needed to reach equilibrium. So we're doing I and then C. So C for the change. Um, and we apply that change to the initial concentrations. And then solve for our equilibrium concentrations. So the I, C, and then the E. And then we use our equilibrium expression that we wrote in step two to solve um, for our unknown concentrations. It's always also a good idea to check your equilibrium concentrations with K to make sure that they're giving the correct value of k. So it's a good check of your work. Okay, so let's start right off with an example. So we've got synthesis of hydrogen fluoride from hydrogen and fluorine. And so we have three moles of H2, six moles of F2, and they're mixed in a three liter flask. So we, before we even go on, let's just calculate molarities real quick, get that out of the way. So we know molarity is moles per liter. So we're gonna take our three moles of H2, divided by our three liters. So we get one molar of H2. We do the same process with the F2. It's six over three. And so we get two, whoops, two molar of F2. All right, let's write our equation. It says that's step one. So we're synthesizing hydrogen fluoride. That means we're forming it. So we want to take H2 as a gas plus F2 as a gas and produce hydrogen fluoride. I think we're going to also assume that's a gas. We need to balance it, so we need a 2 right here. Let's write down our initial concentrations. We know, we're, we know we are starting with 1 molar of H2, so here's our initial. And we know we're starting with 2 molar of F2, and we're assuming 0 molar of HF. Because there's no concentra initial concentration of um, hydrogen fluoride, this means that the reaction will proceed to the right, towards the products, and so there's no need to calculate Q. In this case, we already know the direction of shift. Okay, so what's different about this problem from 10.5 is that we aren't given any equilibrium concentrations. And so we're going to as assign a variable, we're going to say X, and we're going to say that that is equal to the change in concentration of H2. So for our change, because this is a reactant and we know we're shifting to the right, this is minus K, this, or X, sorry, minus X, this is minus X, and this is plus 2X. And the 2 is coming from the balanced chemical equation. That's why it's important to balance. Okay, so now we can write the equilibrium portion. And so we have 1 minus X, 2 minus x, and 0 plus 2x, so that just gives us 2x. So now we can substitute that into our k, because we were also given the k value, so we're going to use that to help us solve this problem. Let's write our expression first. We kind of skipped the steps, but I'd like to get this part done first before I write the expression. So we're going to do products squared, because there's a 2, and then each of our reactants is 1 and 1. Okay, we know that that equals our 1.15 times 10 to the second. Okay, we can substitute in our equilibrium concentrations into our variables. So it's HF squared, which is 2X squared over concentration of hydrogen is 1 minus X. And concentration of fluorine is 2 minus X. All right, so now we've got to do a little bit of math. So I'm going to take my bottom part of my fraction and multiply it over to the other side. So I have 1.15, and you know what? 1.15 times 10 to the negative second, or 10 to the positive second, sorry, is just 115, and I think that's going to be a lot easier to work with. Yeah, let's make things just a little easier. Okay, times 1 minus x, times 2 minus x, and that's equal to 2x squared, which is actually 4x squared, so we're just going to simplify that. You FOIL um, the two parentheses, 
we get 115 times the quantity, let's see, 2 minus x minus 2x, that's so minus 3x, minus x times negative x is plus x squared. And that's equal to 4x squared. Now let's multiply the 115. So we've got 115 times 2 is going to give us 230. Minus 115 times 3, 345. Plus 115x squared. Let's also get our 4x squared. Okay, so we can write that whole thing. Let's do it in correct notation. So put the x squared first. So we get 111x squared minus 345x plus 230 equals 0. Now hopefully you are thinking, oh, this is polynomial. We can break it into, you know, the two roots. But it's the easiest thing to do is going to be to use the quadratic formula, uh, your favorite, I know. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Here's a, b, and c. I'm going to spare you all of the calculations. Basically, we get two values for x. They come out to 2.14 or 0 0.968. Now, we can't have two equilibrium values, so we've got to figure out which one makes the most sense. And if we look back at our initial equilibrium expressions, concentration of H2 is 1 minus x. And so x cannot be 2.14. That gives us a negative value. So we've got to go with 0.968. Okay, so if that's our x, then we can plug that x in to get all of our... Uh, equilibrium concentrations as well as solve for our k value. I'm not sure. If okay, so we've got that we know that our x value is equal to 0 0.968. So now let's go through and calculate all of our equilibrium concentrations. So we know that H2 is equal to 1 minus x, so that gives us 1 minus 0 0.968. And so we get 0 0.032. For our equilibrium concentration of H2, if we do F2, we know from our equilibrium expression it was 2 minus x, so it's 2 minus 0 0.968, and that gives us 1.032 molar, and we know for our hydrogen fluoride, it was 2x squared, which is 2 times 0 0.968 squared, I believe. Oh, sorry, not squared. Confusing it with the equilibrium constant. So just 2x. There we go. Okay, so it's 1.936 molar. Okay, so a good thing to do is check your equilibrium constant expression. Make sure that these values are giving us a good k value. So let's, um, we know that it's concentration of HF squared over the equilibrium concentrations of our reactants. And if we calculate that, we get a value of 1.13 times 10 to the second. Our given value was 1.15 times 10 to the second. These are close enough, so we would say that our answers are good. Okay, well, um, under certain conditions, we can make this math seem even easier because using the quadratic equation and things like that, it's, it's a lot of work. Okay, so let's look at another example. We have gaseous NOCl decomposes to form the gases NO and chlorine. At 35, the equilibrium constant is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5. In an experiment in which one mole of NOCl is placed in a 2-liter flask, what are the equilibrium concentrations? All right, well, let's get a few things squared away first. Let's do the molarity of NOCl. We know it's moles per liter. One mole over a 2-liter flask gives us 0.5 molarity, and we can also write the balanced chemical equation. So let's see, we're decomposing it to an NO gas and a Cl2 gas, and this is also a gas. Okay, next thing we want to do is balance. See, I think I'm going to put a 2 here and a 2 here, and that should give me a balanced chemical equation. Uh, let's flip to the next page so we have some in the work. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite my equation. I've got uh, 2NOCl goes to 2NO plus Cl2. 
Um, I said that I was starting with an initial of 0.5. We're going to assume there's nothing of the products, and so this is going to shift right because we're trying to form products. And so we're going to say that x is equal to the change in concentration of CO2. So this is a plus x. This is a plus 2x because of the balanced chemical equation, which makes this one a minus 2x. So if I write my equilibrium concentration expressions, it's 0.5 minus 2x, 2x, and x. So I can plug that into my k, which is my NO squared Cl2 divided by concentration of NOCl squared. So if I plug all that in, it's going to give me uh, really complicated values. So let's take a look at that. And my bottom is 0.5 minus 2x, and then that has to be squared. This, if we go through and do all this, we're going to get some x cubed. It's, it's really going to be complicated. So one way to simplify this is to look at the value of k. I think it was 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5. This is extremely small. What this means is that the shift to the right isn't going to be very large. And so we can make an assumption where um, if we look at the concentration for the NOCL, 0.5 minus 2x is going to be about equal to 0.5. We're going to say the x is going to be very small. Okay, and by making that assumption, we're making our math a lot easier. Now we can rewrite this expression as 2x squared times x over 0.5 and we square that. Yeah. Okay, so that makes things a lot easier. Okay, and so we end up with, let's see, 2x squared times x is 4x cubed equals 0.5 squared and that's equal to our 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. And so if you do all of your algebra, you should get that x equals 1 times 10 to the negative 2. So now we can, uh, let's check our assumption before we move on. So let's check, let's take our 0.5 minus 2 times 1 times 10 to the negative 2, and that gives us 0.48, which is very close to 0.5, so we're okay with that. Okay, now what we need to do is calculate our equilibrium concentrations and then plug them into the k value to check them. That's good. Okay, so now that we have checked our assumption for x, we can calculate all of our concentrations. So our equilibrium expression for NOCL was 0.5 minus 2x, and we said that that was approximately equal to 0.5. Concentration of NO, we said was equal to 2x, so this is 2 times our x value, which we said was 1 times 10 to the negative second. And so that gives us 2 times 10 to the negative second molarity for NO. And then our Cl2 was equal to x. So we're going to say that's equal to our 1 times 10 to the negative 2 molarity. So these are our equilibrium concentrations. Now let's check using the value of k. We know k was equal to the product concentrations, which was Cl2, times the concentration of NO squared, so that's 2 times 10 to the negative 2 squared, divided by the concentration of NOCl, and that one was also squared. And we get a value of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5, and so we're good. Okay, so we've looked at some different ways to Use ICE and calculate equilibrium concentrations. We'll do a few more examples in class, but otherwise you can get started on these. Have a good day.